Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be stepping back inside competition coming up on Saturday night. Valor fights 40 as he's going to take on Brandon Grimmett. It is Cole Farrell, who, of course, we had Cole on prior to his pro debut, got the victory there, now going to take on Brandon. It's actually a matchup that was supposed to take place at the end of last year. So, Cole, why did that matchup back in December not happen? Well, man, it's actually a crazy story. So... As you know, prior to um, our first interview, that was before my pro debut, correct? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I had my pro debut November 5th of 2016, and uh, I won, like, very quickly in the first round, as I've, you know, done in all of my victories. So I felt fresh. I'm like, you know, if I'm still in shape, if I have no injuries, you know, why not take advantage of getting right back in the cage and, and fighting again? And why not use this momentum to my advantage? So I reached out to Tim and said, yeah, I know it's only two weeks and five days out, but do you have anything for December 2nd? And he said, yeah, I got Brandon Grimmett. So long story short, I was at like 150. I got down to like 127.9 exactly. And instead of just showing up overweight like I could have and the fight could have happened, and instead of messaging the promoter, I, as a man, I messaged Brandon on Facebook and I just said, listen, bro, I'm like right at 127.9, right at 128. I feel like if I try to cut another point two, my body's going to shut down. I've cut from 150, dude. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm like a pound and some changeover. Like, is that cool? He told me, you know, you got to cut it, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I I respect that. I just thought I would ask. So then just when I tried cutting that last pound and a half, my body just shut down on me, and I ended up uh, in the hospital, and that was that. It was a really hard moment for me. Uh, There for a few weeks, I was real disappointed in myself. I felt like I could have just went about things a different way. You know, I just had a teammate here in Georgia, uh, out here in Atlanta at Knuckle Up. He just won the NFC Bantamweight Championship, and uh, he's an amazing fighter. But he showed in. He showed up like two pounds over and still fought and still won the title. And it's like I was there, you know, but I just didn't want to show up over. It's not in me to show up over, and I just kept cutting until I couldn't cut anymore. So... Uh, now we're going to fight again, man, and we're going to do this one at 130, which is super easy for me. I'm like at 139 right now, so I'm ready to rock and roll. In, in terms of the long-term future, do you think uh, 135 is a place to be, or do you ultimately think that you'll be a 125-er? Um, man, I'm a huge 125-er because not only am I 5'9", I'm also a lot thicker and bigger than a lot of these uh, stocky 25ers, so... It's a hard cut from me, but with the correct nutrition and dieting, I've actually managed to make my walk around weight like 143 this entire camp uh, prior to this February 11th fight with Mr. Brandon. And I'm like, you know, 10 pounds out from weight right now. I feel amazing. Um, This is the only fight I've ever had, you know, man, I've had. I've had over 20 fights in combat sports throughout Muay Thai, uh, kickboxing, uh, amateur boxing, amateur MMA, and then my pro debut. So I've never had one per- fight to where it was personal, to where I had, you know, I wanted to really go in there and physically cause bodily harm on my opponent. Like, And this is the first fight that I uh, sincerely want to go in there and, and, and hurt my opponent. So, because uh, a lot of things happened after, I, instead of, you know, showing respect in the hospital after I tried cutting the weight just because he told me he wanted me to, he, you know, he went on Facebook Live like a little high school kid and posted video, a five-minute video ranting, talking shit about me, compulsively lying, saying that I only got down to 141 when I was at 127.9, it was just a bunch of stuff. And I'm not really into the whole like social media drama. I just like the fight. So for me, it was something new. Like, I'm like, okay. Cause originally I didn't really think we were going to fight again. I'm like, you know what? He's the one, 
you know, maybe he's a, a can make the 125 weight cut well, and I need a little bit more time. Maybe I'll see him again. But then when I had someone reach out to me and said, hey, go to this guy's Facebook uh, profile and, like, go to his most recent video. He's saying he's going to knock you out, blah, blah, blah. It's your fat ass, blah, blah, blah. And talking mad shit. So he's made it personal. I messaged him and just said, like, please let me fight this guy February 11th. And uh, and me, me and him both agreed to do it at one thirty. So, yeah, man, this is the first fight that's personal for me. Like, I really want to go in there and do work on this guy and just not only show people why I'm the best, but also just show him why he shouldn't, like, disrespect fighters who are on a whole different level than him. Like, this guy's not on my level at all. I could go on and on about it, but it, it, that would make the interview an hour. Uh, so. <laughs> In terms of it being personal, is that a good or bad thing? Or is it a little bit of both? I love it, man. It's just, like, I I, I don't really know. It's undescribable, man. Like, I'm not letting it consume me. Like, I'm not allowing the fact that it's personal to, to consume me mentally. But at the same time, it has lit more of a fire under my ass in the training camp in itself. And, um... After, you know, all these, you know, I'm on, um, outside of my last amateur fight, my pro debut, I had three kickboxing matches before that in the tournament, all first round. So all five of my last fights, you know, in combat sports have ended in round one. And I say that, I do say it humbly, but at the same time, it's built a confidence that, uh, that I can't ignore and I can't shy away from. I have to accept the ability I have, and just keep training hard. So I think that it being personal is a good thing. I think that it's just lit that little bit more of a fire under my ass, and when I go in there, I'm going to be the same Cole that you're talking to in this interview. I'm going to be talking to him, saying the same things to him that I'm saying to you, like right before we tap, you know, I'm not going to tap gloves with him. I take that back. See, I just naturally told you I was going to tap with him because I have sportsmanship. You see, in all my fights, I've tapped gloves before everyone. I've never not tapped with a fighter, ever. And I've been doing this for, you know, going on almost 10 years. So it's, it's a little weird, but it, to answer your question overall, it is a good thing because I'm not going in there cocky. Brandon doesn't have the best record, but he's experienced. He had, you know, a bunch of wins as an Ami. So I'm not, like, underestimating the kid, but I'm just on a whole different level. So the fact he made it personal just makes me want to actually hurt him instead of win the fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, normally I finish fights with the intention of winning, even if they end violently. I just want to win. So I don't think people realize what I'm going to go in there with. I'm just going to go in there with bad intentions for sure. Any concern at all? Um, that on, on fight night that because of this fight now being personal that, that emotions could get the best of you and um, you you uh, you leave yourself open to things? Well, a lot of fighters, that is the case. I mean, it truly is. But with me, man, uh, I've kind of been an emotional person in general, an emotional fighter in general my entire life. So... I kind of use it to my advantage. And like I stated earlier, uh, the reason um, it ends badly for some guys is because they allow that uh, that emotion to consume, consume them, and I don't let it consume me. I just try to find that perfect balance. Like, okay, it's personal, but at the same time, I got to show respect because anything can happen in the cage. And uh, But at the same time, I know I'm going to finish the fight. Like, you know, the this is the first time, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad, this is my first interview le leading up to this fight, and it's next Saturday. So I want to say this on record so I can show everyone I know that I, like, I mean what I say and I'm about my business. I am going to finish this fight within the first three and a half minutes at the most of the first round, and I've never predicted or called a fight. I'm normally not that guy. But I just hope he hears this because it's not just talk. And I know we have to 
you know, be in that cage next Saturday. So I know what's going to happen. I think when he steps in the cage with me, he's going to be like, holy shit. Like, I, I, he was nothing but respectful to me, and I just kind of went behind his back and went on Facebook Live and got real personal and talked a bunch of shit that I shouldn't have talked. So, yeah, for the record, I'm going to finish this fight February 11th. Um, in Nashville, Tennessee, within three and a half minutes of the first round. Um, I'll either strangle him or I'll TKO him, um, whichever one, you know, comes first. Like I said, I'm, I don't go in there. I don't fight cocky, so I go in there with, and then I just correct errors. So whatever he, um, you know, does wrong, I'm just going to correct on it and take advantage of it. Then that's going to be it. That's going to be it's going to be all it's going to take is just that focus and that energy from all of this trash talk. Cause I haven't really talked much trash, honestly, he's the one who posted videos and stuff. So this is the first time I've got to kind of speak on it. So I just don't think that, uh, I think every fighter in this sport deserves some type of respect. And when I was in the hospital, you know what I'm saying? For you to just still be talking shit about me. Like now I have to make an example of you. You know what I'm saying? So, People who train with me and know me, they know what I'm saying right now. Like, I back it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know I, I'm really one of the best in this whole southeast of the country. Um, and a lot of people know that. And for people who don't know it, they'll at least get a taste of it next Saturday. And, of course, up you'll be able to watch this on flowcombat.com. Cole, I appreciate the time and good luck against Brandon. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Be easy.